Okay, um, so welcome to uh, this week's lab. So this week, we will see that how we can analyze data in Python. So we will do a very simple uh, project, project that to analyze the house price data uh, in Python. And we are going to use the Pandas uh, Python library. So first, uh, let's go to the SageMaker to start our instance. And so let's check that instance and let's say start. <clears throat> and next, uh, let's download the data. So the data is on GitHub. Uh, so you can see that that is an X, uh, Excel file. So let's download the data into our uh, local computer. And next, we are going to upload the data into our uh, S3 bucket. So that is our uh, data lake solution on AWS. So in the console, so let's switch, let's open um, the S3 in a new browser. And here we have already created a bucket. So let's go to that bucket and let's upload the data that we just downloaded. Okay, so let's add a file. So that is the house price and upload. Okay. Uh, so you can see it's it's very similar to OneDrive or um, a Dropbox um, that so when you're using the S3 bucket uh, S3, but uh, we can also load data from S3 into Python. So that is a uh, really a solution that of the data lake on Amazon. So that has been successfully uploaded, and now let's go back to our uh, SageMaker. And uh, let's refresh and see. So you may pause uh, the video here. So until that uh, instance is ready. Okay, uh, so our instance is ready. So before we open our notebook instance, uh, so let's go to the Jupyter lab so that we want to update our local repository first. So just in case if we changed our GitHub repository, so we want to make uh, uh, the same change on our local repository. So let's go to GitHub and let's do a pull. Okay, and looks like there's nothing being changed. So now let's open our uh, notebook instance. And so we're going to create a new instance that a new a notebook. So let's say new and we are still using the Conda Python 3. So that is a uh, that will be enough for this lab. And uh, so let's call it lab 12. And let's give it a title. So let's switch to the markdown. And one hashtag stands for the level one heading. So OK. And the next, so let's load the data into Python. So load data into, let's actually into Panders dot date frame. Okay, uh, so first we need to uh, import the panders. So import panders, and the panders Python library should has already been installed by default. Okay, so now let's uh, load the house price data. So date frame equals. So we just call it the date frame. Uh, panders dot read Excel function. So we read the Excel file uh, from our S3 bucket as a date frame, and we call that uh, date frame variable as df. Okay, so now let's go to our S3 bucket. You can see the house price is now in S3. Uh, so if we click that file. Okay, you can see that in S3, and we can copy this S3 RUI. So that is the location of this house price Excel in my S3 bucket. And now if I go back to our notebook, and we put that one as a string format. And because our instance already has the access uh, to the S3 bucket, so that we can load data into our notebook directly. So now if we just look at the first 10 records, and if we run it, 
and we also see the first 10 records of this uh, in this Excel file. So you can see we have ID of each single record, the price, the number of the bedrooms, number of the bathrooms, the house type, it can be single family home, townhouse, condo, um, etc. Uh, it also has uh, the lot size, you, the year that house has been built, uh, the area of the house, and not how many days this record, um, this single record has on, I think that on Zillow website, and not how many people viewed this uh, house record on Zillow. All right, so now we have success, successfully loaded data into our into a data frame format. Um, so our first question is that uh, we want to calculate the unit price. Okay, so which is 2.1. Okay, so that is the unit price. So we have the price the total price and we also have the size of the house so we want to uh, calculate the new unit price which is price divided by the area and we want to save that result into a new column so which we can call it unit price uh, so in pandas um, by using the date frame it's very easy to do that so we can just uh, simply um, Called date frame, and let's give the new name of the the name of the new column. So you need price, which equals date frame. So now let's call the price divide by date frame and area. Okay. So after that, now let's check the top ten rows of this of the new table, new date frame. And now you can see it's very nice. Now we have the unit price. Okay, so if you calculate the unit price manually, so you will see that this one divided by the area. So we should have the right unit price. Okay, so here we just show the top 10 rows because the table is a little bit longer. Um, um, so if you want, you can just see the entire table, but that is not uh, necessary. All right, so now let's move on to the 2.2. Okay, so that is a, a house type. Okay, uh, so in date frame, if we just want to show the, a specific uh, column, we can use date frame and also we can call that column name. So here, just copy the column name here. And now if I run it, you can see here I'm just looking at that single column. Okay. Uh, so the 2.2 is asking that we want to know that for each single type of the house type, so how many how many records are there? So how many single family home, how many townhouse, how many condo, uh, etc. Okay, so to do that, we can use a very simple method that is called value counts okay so value counts will count that number of the values that for a specific column uh, so now if we run this one okay so you can see that okay so we have thir uh, 36 single family home three rec three townhouse and also two condos okay so that is also very nice and let's move on so next uh, so that is three point, sorry, two point three. Uh, here we want to know the average price, uh, but we want to know the average price for a house that is more than two bathrooms. Okay, so we want to get the average price for the house that has more than two bathrooms. Okay, and so if you know that we can calculate the price dot mean to get the average price, so that's very easy to do that. Okay, but here we want to calculate the average price for the house that have have more than two um, 
best rooms. So we don't want to calculate average price for all the houses. OK, so in this case, we have to fill out the data first. So that is called in, uh, in Pandas data frame, we can use this look uh, LOC method. And within that uh, method, we can see that where date frame and the number of the bathroom, okay, and is greater than two, okay. So this will retain the records that where the bathroom is greater than two, okay. So now we have the um, uh, the records where the bathroom is greater than two, but we just want the price. So we continue and price. Okay, so now we have only the price column for the records where we have above number of two, more than two bathrooms. So let's pass that uh, to another variable. Let's call that price more than two bathrooms. All right. So now if we OK, so we just pass this part into a single variable so that we can use that single variable, call that single variable easier. OK, so now we have all the prices for the uh, for the rooms that have more than two bathrooms. So we can now calculate average price. And let's put that one into a string format. So let's say print average price of house more than two best rooms is dollar sign. Okay. Dot format. Okay. So now we can use uh, the the this variable, and also we can calculate the average, which is mean and now if we write okay so now we have very nice statement so every price for houses that are more than two bathrooms is this one okay great so that is 2.3 and 2.4 that we want to calculate the mean and also median prices okay so that actually is a uh, is pretty simple so to 2.3 so that is mean and median unit price okay so this one is very simple so um, let's use the the uh, string format directly so that mean unit price is dollar sign dot format OK, uh, so now we can just call that date frame and we are looking at the unit price, which is the one that we just calculated and dot mean. So this will calculate the mean value. OK, so the the mean unit price is this and we can do the median in the same way. So median, so literally I just change uh, the name from mean to median. Okay, so that is a median unit price. Okay, so that is very simple. Uh, let's look at 2.5. So for 2.5, and also always please feel free to pause the video. So if you think you, you want to try the, uh, those questions on your own first. Okay. So here, this one we want to calculate the average price per house type. Okay, so two point five we want to calculate average price per house type. So here we know that we have those number of the houses. So for each type of the house, so what is the average price? Okay, and so that we need to use that aggregation function. Okay, so that's a date frame, and we can use that group by. And this time we are going to group group by the house type. 
okay and group by the house type and we want average <clears throat> okay so so for each single type for each type of house we want to calculate the average values so now if we run it we can see we have the average id average price average number of bedroom bathroom etc however we just want the price Okay, so we can continue add price after the mean method. So now if we run it, uh, we can see that uh, condo, single family home, and also townhouse. We can see that single family home are is the most expensive type of the house and which makes sense. Okay, so that is a uh, average um, price per house type all right so until now we are all use we are using all the uh, functions that in um, pandas and you can see by using pandas it's very easy to load data into python and also it's very easy to do some very simple statistics something like similar by using sql or some sometimes it's similar like uh, dictionaries or lists okay so our three our next question is that, so that 2.6 is predict price by house area. So uh, we want to use a linear, simple linear regression model to predict the price by the area. And I want you to, to report the slope intercept uh, intercept r square and also the p-value okay so to do that we can use um, I don't think uh, pandas has that function so to my knowledge I don't think pandas has and there are a lot of other Python libraries that can do the simple linear regression model so in the, in our uh, lab let's use uh, scipy and let's say from SciPy, let's import states. Okay, so states module has a simple linear regression uh, function. So let's say result equals states dot linear regression. And again, in this parentheses, so we should put x first and also y second. So x will be the area and also y will be the price and here we are still using the pan, using the date frame to pass the variables so that date frame area that is x and the date frame price okay so that we will have we have the result okay so now we 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 have a simple linear regression model and we pass the result into this result variable so now let's report the slope intercept r square and also p value. So let's use a string format. Say print. Okay, slope is okay and dot format. So that is in the result dot slope. And let's do the same thing for the other uh, um, parameters. Okay, so that is intercept, and in the result, it, it is also called intercept. And the next is R square. Uh, in this state, they report R value, which okay, which is a correlation between X and Y. So, but in that case, R square equals R value the square of the R values. And next, let's print the P value. So P value is, okay, as a dot format result dot P value. Okay, so let's look at our model. Okay, and that is the slope, that is the intercept. Uh, R square is very low, so in this case, you can see R square is not very high, so that is because um, there are many other factors that will determine the, the price of the house, like locations, 
the year that has been built, etc. The p value is um, below 0 0.05, so that means our parameters are statistically significant. Okay, uh, so which is nice. All right, uh, so our last question. So our last question is asking that, uh, so based on the model that we have, Okay, so based on the model we have, we want to predict, okay, uh, price of house with uh, 2,000 square feet. Okay, uh, so I just gave it a very, very simple <coughs> uh, title, so heading. All right, so we know that, so the value equals the area times the slope and plus the intercept okay so that is how the uh, model working so let's bring that one into the bring the calculation into our string format so we see price of a house with this number of square feet Okay, SQ is this dollar. Okay, dot format. Okay, so the first is 2000, so that's the size of the house. And the second is the size times um, the slope. Okay, times slope and plus the intercept. Okay. And now let's see what is the result. Okay, uh, actually let's add a space here. Okay, so the, the predict price is um, this one. Okay, so that sounds reasonable actually. So that's that sounds reasonable in, in Harrisonburg, Virginia. All right, uh, so that's all for this lab. So uh, I wish you can do something on your own. So after this lab, you, you feel you can uh, have a better understanding of using pandas and also using other uh, Python library to an to analyze data. And also you can see it's very nice to do the data analytics in the Drupal notebook. Okay, because the result is very interactive. Okay, and also you can you can share this notebook with others just like a scientific report. Okay, actually let's do that. So let's say we save this notebook um and let's close the notebook and let's shut that notebook down and now let's go to jupyter lab so now you can see we have one that has uh, on track so let's put that one and into the track and let's add a comment so this is lab 12 date analysis okay and let's commit that change and Finally, let's make this push. Okay. Uh, so this may take, okay, it's done. So now let's go to our uh, GitHub and let's look at how, the, uh, how our notebook look like on GitHub. So that is lab 12. Okay. And uh, sometimes uh, the notebook may not be this been displayed correctly on GitHub. Uh, so, um, but in this case, I think everything is great. Okay. Okay. So if for some reason that you cannot view your notebook on GitHub, so you can copy the URL of your notebook from GitHub into this NBV website, and you just paste that URL and you hit go. So from this website, you will be able to see the result. Okay, so just in case if you your notebook, uh, you have difficulties in viewing your notebook on GitHub, and you can use this NB Viewer. All right, so you can submit um, the URL on your, of your GitHub repository on Canvas, and once you are done with your lab, so finally, so let's close those stuff. And finally, so do not forget to stop your notebook instance because that is uh, expensive. So that is more expensive than the Cloud9.